Well, thank you, Esme, very much for, for reading that for us. Now, um, at our last all age, as we start to think about our reading, at our last all age, we managed to nip back over to the church, didn't we, uh, by, by clicking. But that doesn't seem to be working anymore. I don't know, maybe I've overused it. Um, so um, maybe I can try... Right, well, th this has been in my loft for quite some time now, uh, and it's falling apart a bit. It's been a bit battered around, but let's see if it still flies. I'll see you on the other side. Esme's reading, the reading that she read to us from Philippians 2. Uh, but just like last time, I thought that we'd use a past St Andrew's sermon to help us. Uh, but we're going to go a bit further back this time. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to the 20th of October 2015. So let's go. doesn't quite stop there. Uh, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Now at first that sounds like something we'd agree with easily, but we really need to hear the words of the passage today. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Not most of the things you should do should be done for others, but all of the things you do should be motivated by thinking about others. It's more radical uh, than, than just most, isn't it? It's more of this radical love that we were talking about last week. Um, just pause. Uh, pocket size one this time. Um, just to say, of course, by last week, he must have been five years ago last week. Uh, he's just getting from, confused. Anyway, um, carry on, play. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit says Philippians, but rather in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Okay, let's just pause there again. Uh, now is a great time to have a think about all that uh, this uh, lovely guy with a very similar haircut to me is uh, uh, saying. Um, so we're going to think about Philippians 2, we're going to think about what he's been saying, and we're going to have the chance to talk about it in our family groups or if your own, then to think about it, maybe write some things down. Uh, again, some questions will come up on the screen and you'll have five minutes to have a chat. Uh, so do that now and then uh, we'll be back in a minute.
Right, well, I hope you've had a chance to uh, talk a bit about that and think a bit about that. Uh, we're going to hear a bit more of that sermon now. So um, uh, let's put those things that we were talking about into practice as we uh, find out a bit more about why we would do that. Play. But why would we do all of this? Why would we not want to look after our own interests? Why would we not want to push ourselves forward so we can achieve? Why would we not want to achieve to better ourselves and give ourselves a good life? Why wouldn't we just think about ourselves? Well, Philippians 2 says, because Jesus didn't. Philippians 2 uh, verse 3 says, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Jesus humbled himself, became human. Let's explore that a bit. A bit. If you've got um, children, then there will have been a time at some point uh, when they were little, when uh, you were reminded of how dependent they are. Whether they fallen asleep in the car and you carried them up to bed or, or uh, you um, uh, had seen them sleeping somewhere and uh, they uh, just look so entirely dependent. Or maybe uh, you've been feeding a weaning baby. Uh, they can't hold the spoon at first, let alone know where their mouth is. They're so reliant on you to give them the food that they need to survive. Or with a, a, a brand new baby. It seems amazing now when I see my kids uh, bouncing around the house and jumping out of trees and things and going off into town with their friends. Uh, but when they were uh, newborn, we could lie them on a table in their, uh, uh, in their chair, in their car chair, or, or lie them down on a sofa or on a bed and not even entertain the possibility that they could fall off. They were so weak, so helpless so dependent that they couldn't even roll over themselves. Babies are amazing and yet they're so tiny and weak and dependent. So much so that we should be scandalised that Jesus became one. Today, marvel at the hands that formed the earth because they shrunk down to the hands that reached out for help when he was born. The hands that flung stars into space became the hands that flailed around in the manger. It's scandalous, isn't it, that God would or could do such a thing, isn't it? So often in other religions or, or worldviews, the central idea is that we, the people, need to humble ourselves before an almighty God. And of course you read uh, similar things in the Bible, but what's unique about Christianity? Jesus. That in Jesus, our creator, our sustainer, our awesome, almighty God humbled himself and became nothing. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, says Philippians, rather he made himself nothing. Can we get our heads around that truth? So often we campaign for our rights and fight for our equality, uh, but this God, our God, lays down his rights and forgoes his equality and makes himself nothing. Isn't that one of the most scandalous things that's ever happened in history? And why? Why does he do it? Well, it's out of season, isn't it? But uh, this Christmas carol explains it perfectly, doesn't it? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? The child that you delivered will soon deliver you. And suddenly we see this picture differently, don't we? This tiny, weak, dependent, 
hand clutching the finger uh, becomes the, the hand of salvation. A hand that reaches down into the darkness of our world. A hand that uh, belonging to a God that humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross, reaches down to save us. Okay, let's just pause there. So that's why, that's why we would do it. He humbled himself for us, so we humble ourselves for others. Well, look, I'm going to get this old thing back to the vicarage now before it falls apart and I get stuck here in 2015. Uh, but let's let him finish as well, okay? I'll see you in a bit. Play. And what does Paul say to finish? Well, let's read from Philippians. Jesus, the one who became tiny, weak, who humbled himself, was exalted. And Philippians says, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Little miscalculation. That looks like the end of the TARDIS. Oh well. As we continue to think about all that we've been thinking about in the church, uh, we're going to sing and we're going to let our kids choir remind us of the God that we have. <laughs> 